Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. This is Rick Neal from ProSlidePads.com. I'm here to talk to you about transitions and explain to you video creator version 2.0. Um, what we're gonna, I'm going to show you an example of some transitions I created just as, so you can see how they flow. Then I'm going to show you an example of what we're going to create today. And that way you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. There's a transition. The video is a background video to the scene. Another transition, more background video, and then on top of that, it's being drawn SWF objects. That is a video masking uh, template I'm playing with. Now here's a image being drawn. Then the transition happens to another background video and objects drawn on top of that. That's how we're getting the fluid motion. Okay, and then another transition. Now this is video I got from the free video, free uh, royalty free video module. And I popped that in the screen, then blew it up. Now I'm gonna have another transition out of that into another background video with an SWF drawn on top of that. And that's the end. So that those are transitions. Now here's what we're gonna build right now. That's when you see a couple of them in action. Okay, so we have the clock there, and then it's gonna move. Now we're gonna transition to another background video and another object. Okay, and then that object goes away. So here's I just want to give you an example of also of how the slide architecture kind of works so you have an idea of what we're doing when you're looking at the blocks up here on the screen uh, I am representing those blocks here and then when you go to the scene tab there's a background video that plays throughout the whole scene this is one scene here this is one scene here how do you know the difference because there's a black bar between the scenes so you can tell which is which so <clears throat> Here's one scene, here's another scene, here's that background video plays throughout the whole scene, no matter what you're doing. New scene starts, new video starts. So then you put your clock here, and you put your guy there, you bring a video in or image. Here is the SWF that is the transition. As you can see, as you add items to the stage, they stack one on top of the other. That's, that's how it works. This one will play, and then that one will play, and then this one will play, and then that thing will play. And that makes up your scene. Now, if these things don't cover the screen, then you're watching this background video throughout the whole time all of this animation is happening. So you put your stuff on the screen, slides, whatever, and then your transition is sitting on top, and it does the wipe from clear screen to full screen wipe. Stops right there. Then here's your new scene now the first action you want to do in the next scene in order this scene right here right the next thing you want to do is put the ending part of the transition so it goes from full screen cover to zero and it reveals what's underneath which will be the background video then the next object is drawn and then the next thing you brought in and then the next now what would happen is if you had no background video when you came out of this transition, it would just be white underneath. Then this would happen. Then that would happen. Okay. So to give you an example of that, here is the way this looks right now. The clock is drawn, moves over a bit, transition happens. You won't get that buffering slide access. And then here's the new uh, scene with the drawing happening and the guy moves down. Okay. Now, if, if I remove the background video here and render this scene, you'll see <clears throat> here's background video playing with the optic being drawn on top, moves over, transition happens. Now there's nothing. Transition happens, then this drawing occurs. You, you have to have something in the background video or this is what you will end up with. So now, if I go back and put something in the background, and render this again. Now you see it starts background video, 
SWF being drawn on top moves over transition happens and then now the new video is revealed now that buffering assets you saw only happens here in preview when, I, when you render out the video you don't have that problem so that's basically what it really boils down to this here is standard explaindio when you're adding things they stack one on top of the other that's why when this animation finishes and you go here and here you can't this can't move then you're this is done you've moved on to the next thing um, and that's how things work and explain you but the background video will play throughout all of the scenes all of the scene frames that are part of that scene this scene has two this one has two if I were to come over here and decide that um, I wanted to put these circles up here for whatever reason okay now look I have one two three so what happened is, is after he moves and this will be drawn on top of the background video which will be after this transition happens so everything is working in order now I know some people say that you know I get kind of complicated and they don't understand sometimes but I suggest that what you might do is go and do a little bit of reading on frame animation and then go do some reading on how flash works in this animation because a uh, explain was written in Adobe Air which you use flash to create so if you kind of have some rules about how flash works underneath everything you understand why we're doing things the way we're doing uh, Explained it was written in Adobe Air to Andrew's specifications and one of the specs says that things are going to happen one after the other for now. This is a single threaded application. When multi-threaded comes then you can have multiple actions happening where you can have the guy up here and the circles drawing at the same time. Um, that's down the road. Let's talk about what we have in front of us and this is it. So background video, SWF, Transition SWF on top of everything, switching to the new scene, completing that transition, and drawing on top of it all. Here you take a look again. There's the clock. And this is where I drew it. Then I put the transition, which is that right there, on top of everything so that it would do its thing. <clears throat> new scene where I brought in the uh, new transition put it on top you can't see it because it's already have have run um, and then after after that transition plays then the guy is drawn with the sandwich and then he moves over and gets small then the rings are drawn okay so see everything is happening in order the scene break is where you put the transition because you're transitioning from the current scene to the new scene okay from the current scene to the new scene so the transitions if you have transitions that you'd like to use the key to it is to split them in half um, normally a transition will start off maybe with nothing on the screen then it'll wipe on and cover the whole screen and then it'll reduce itself and that will allow you to um, that will allow you to continue the transition. So if you have transitions that you want to use for yourself, cut them in half. Put the first part that starts off with nothing to full screen on the first scene, and then put the other half that starts off covering the full screen to nothing on the beginning of the second scene, and that gives you your transitions hopefully I'm not you know please excuse me for repeating myself but I'm trying to make sure that you understand what's going on and people learn differently some people learn by looking at it and seeing it some people learn by knowing what the science is behind it and that is my goal here is to give you some idea of how everything is structured and so I'm gonna give you a chance to play with this thing if you have any other comments let me know this is Rick from ProSlidePacks.com. Have fun with transitions.